two days left before the Eagles and Giants here. I guess uh, let's go over the uh, injury stuff here. Wisniewski uh, would be a big one here, John. We talked about leaky left side. If he's not there, you got big problems on that side. So give us an update on Wiz as uh, they get ready for the Giants. Yeah, he's listed as questionable. Uh, and he was working again in a limited fashion, uh, trying to get some of his movement back with the bulky ankle. So I think it's going to be a, a true game time decision. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right. The Eagles are, are hopeful uh, he's able to play because we've all seen, I think, enough of Chance Warmack and Isaac Samalo. Uh, and with Nick Foles back playing quarterback, it becomes more important uh, to pass protect because you do not have the mobility back there that can kind of mask the deficiencies yeah. uh, that Carson uh, often did. Uh, so that left side is going to be under a microscope. Whether, you know, and even if Wiz plays, it's going to be under a microscope because those guys have to play better. Which guy do you like? I mean, if you have to choose one of those two guys, John, is there one guy that is better than the other between Warmack and Sayamala? Yeah, I would choose Chance uh, only because I think Isaac has kind of lost his confidence in, in a lot of ways. I think he's sort of this year's Nelson Aguilar. Uh, he's, he's not as bad as a, a football player as he has shown this year. And I think his troubles early in the season, the fact that he was benched, uh, the fact that he was then sort of uh, overlooked when they went to Warmack and, 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 and went to Wiz and, and didn't go back to him, I, I think he's lost his confidence. And, um, I don't know if he's going to be able to get it back until after the season is over. Hopefully, he's able to rebuild himself uh, from that point. Yeah, John, um, did Peterson indicate who the guy would be if Wisniewski can't go? Did he did he lean or did he give a Peterson answer? <laughs> he gave a Peterson answer. He said yes. <laughs> is it going to be is it going to be Chance or Isaac? Yes. Uh, so I, I think I love the. By the way, there. real quick, John, Zongaro from from NBC Philly asked the question. He says, if he can't go, would it be Chance Wormack or would it be Isaac Sayamala? Yes. Peterson says yes. <laughs> Zongaro follows up with, it would be Wormack. <laughs> I mean, the fact that he threw one guy out at you know, the follow up is great. And Peterson says, or Isaac. Chance or Isaac. I mean, what a great game of ping pong. Yeah, it, it, it's, you know, it, it's, you see that a lot in college in depth charts. Uh, they'll put two starters down and Chance or Isaac. And I think, you know, it, it was funny, as you mentioned, but uh, I think it was more of it, it depends who plays well and who, who doesn't because that's what happened last week when Wiz went down. Chance Warmack came in didn't play well, then they kind of finished with Isaac. And I think a similar thing will happen this week. If Chance will probably start. And I think more so because Isaac plays different positions and they rotate him in a tackle uh, as the backup swing tackle uh, because they haven't dressed Will Beatty yet. And he was even working some at center when Jason had his little uh, cleaving incident. So he, he kind of moves around more. Uh, so I think they, they'll they start with Chance Warmack, and if he doesn't perform, they'll go to Isaac. And I think that's what Doug was trying to get across in his way, but obviously he's not going to just come out and say it. So I, I think that's how the Eagles would know about it. This can't go. So, John, with the issues and the leaky side of the left side of the line there, does Doug expect the Giants to blitz Nick Foles early and often? Yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, that, that's probably a, a pretty good <laughs> way to, to plan. And, and by the way, I, I think that would happen and, and will happen every week. I, I think teams are going to overload on that left side until the Eagles can prove they can protect and I think you're going to see overload blitzes week in and week out. And the Eagles are going to have to figure it out and deal with it. And we'll see what they do. I, I think there'll they'll be a lot more uh, protection-based schemes, uh, whether it's a tight end on that side, whether it's a running back shipping 
Uh, you got to give those guys some help. Is that yeah. the nightmare scenario that there's a strip sack earlier that Foles turns the ball? Is Foles prone to turning the ball over? No, I mean, he's a smart guy. I, I, I wouldn't say he's prone to turning it over, but anybody can turn it over if they get stripped in the pocket. And so uh, I, I, the, the nightmare scenario for me is that the, the protection on the left side breaks down and Nick gets hurt, and then you're down to Nate Sudfeld. That's the nightmare we'll be, scenario. Yeah, we'll be right in there when you're ready. Hey, John, um, speaking of Sudfeld, you wrote about this, and, I mean, I'm still getting text messages and people tweeting at us about, you know, are they going to look at a backup quarterback? I mean, uh, is there any talk? I mean, it, it, I know he was asked today, is he comfortable – with the backup quarterback situation. But, I mean, is there any thought that they would even be making calls, sniffing around, talking to anybody? Because to me, the what I heard today insinuated that, I, I don't want to say that Wentz uh, is just a system guy, but they look at it as, I don't care who the quarterback is, it's the system that kind of works. Well, no, Carson's not a system guy. And I just wrote about that on 973ESM.com. It should be up right now. but. Uh, yeah, people were looking at Doug and what he said Monday and sort of playing the game that got you with him because he said, when he was talking about Nick as a backup, he's saying you need a backup who has experience or you're in trouble is, is basically uh, how he worded it. And then in the same conversation, he said he was very comfortable with Nate Sudfeld, who is now the backup and has never taken a snap. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. But... When you say that, I, I, and as I put it, you know, there's a lot of coach speak. We all know that in, in these types of environments, and that's part of what Doug does. No question about it. Uh, but you have to look at this realistically. I, I mean, whatever name you want to throw out there, Colin Kaepernick, RG3, this is week 15 of the NFL season. <laughs> they haven't practiced. Uh, forget about in, in, in in this system, in any system. They haven't played a gown of football. So that's, that's from the Eagles' standpoint. The reality is, if Nick gets hurt, they're done. It, it doesn't matter if it's Nate Sudfeld. It doesn't matter if it's Colin Kaepernick. It doesn't matter if it's RG3 or any other name you can come up with. I the guess Eagles let me, are let me, let me just ask fans. this, just to play devil's advocate, because I agree with you. But. If you have any ideas of grandeur of being a Super Bowl team and there is an option out there, do you behoove it to your team to explore it or stay status quo with a guy who's never taken a snap? No, I, I mean, and, and that's what I kind of said. I, I mean, the litmus test, and this is how I worded it in, in the piece, it's not about who your friends would recognize in a bar when you say the name. Obviously, they're going to know Colin Kaepernick, and they're going to know Robert Griffin, and they're not going to know Nate Sudfeld. But Nate's the guy who's been practicing every week uh, with John Filippo and Frank Reich and Doug Peterson. And, and Nate's the guy who knows this offense. Uh, and, and he's the better fit for this team at this particular time. If this were week one, Maybe we're having a different conversation. Not maybe, we're definitely having a different conversation. But this is week 15. You can't plug and play a quarterback who hasn't practiced at the highest level and expect him to go out and win playoff games. You're better off with Nate Sudfeld. That's not to say you're, you're, you're in a good position. You're just in a slightly better position. Because nobody's coming in week 15 and learning one of the most complicated and intricate offenses in the NFL. And that's where, remember, the Eagles uh, are confident in Nick Foles. And one of the major reasons why is because when typical teams go to their backup quarterback, they have to scale their entire offense back. They have to cut out large portions of it. The Eagles don't have to do that. So from that standpoint, they're lucky. If they went to somebody off the street, they'd have to scale the entire thing back drastically. 
John McBullen with us. John, so Mike and I were talking a little bit about Nick Foles and what he brings to the table. And I guess if you say that Carson Wentz, the one thing that made him special was his ability to extend the play. There's a lot of talk about Nick Foles and his ability to throw a deep ball and a deep and accurate ball. And Mike and I went back and forth on what scenario we thought was more likely. Is it more likely that on the very first offensive play of the game, they go for some home run ball to a Torrey Smith or an Alshon Jeffrey? Or is it more likely in your mind that they turn around and hand it off to Jay Ajayi? I think it's more likely they take a shot uh, to send ah. a message. See, John, I explained uh, I, it to Pete. If I'm Doug Peterson, I go right to Foles, and I tell him, look, you're I have my guy. In you. I trust you. I have confidence in you, and I'm going to show you. You pick which receiver. I'll send him down the field. We'll play action, and that guy will be right there waiting underneath your perfectly thrown ball. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to work, but that's, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think from a mental standpoint, I, I think it shows the home, whole team, not just Nick uh, and not just the offense, even the defensive guys. It shows uh, this is business as usual. Obviously it isn't, but that's, you know, part of being a coach in this league and, and, and part that I think Doug has been perhaps most successful at is managing personality. And that's what you're doing. You're sending a message if you do that. If you scale everything back and try to go ultra conservative, I think you're sending the wrong message. So, uh, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you, Mike. I, I think he's going he's gonna to say, you know, he's Doug Peterson. He's aggressive. He's going to go right away and try to take advantage of a bad football team. You know, real quick, um, because there is a part of him, like he said, I'm happy for Nick. And it's almost like, I don't want to say, I mean, obviously he likes Wentz. That's his guy. But there's a part of him, I think, that feels an attachment to Nick as well. Like, man, if, if Wentz was going to get hurt, this is the one guy that I would want to have this opportunity. Well, he wanted him. I mean, this is a guy he wanted to be the backup quarterback. Uh, this is a guy he went to. Howie Roseman and said, this is, this is who should be here, uh, to not only be the backup, but to also mentor uh, Carson. And you know, Nick's gonna, not going to create waves. Because uh, remember, when, when we came into this season, we had no idea Carson Wentz was going to be an MVP candidate. We were hopeful uh, to have a, a large spike for a second-year player, but there was no guarantee of that. And the last thing you want it's like some of those names we mentioned that could possibly have starting experience. And, and if things did go wrong early in the season, people would be saying, oh, you should put this guy in. The Eagles didn't want that. They wanted a good locker room guy. They wanted a guy who's going to help. And they wanted a guy uh, who knows the offense. So Doug is very comfortable with Nick Foles. That is not an act. John, do you get the idea that all that elbow soreness that Nick Foles had back in the preseason, has he shown enough through this week of practice, through the times that he's come in and mop, mop up duty, that that's all in the past and that he's 100% ready to go? No, I, I think we have to keep an eye on that. Uh, I mean, one of the things, the difference between being a backup and a starter in this league, and I, I think fans don't realize just how little um, – sort of uh, the second and third string guys, uh, how, how little they get reps in practice. It's basically once you get into game preparation mode uh, each week in the regular season, whether it's week one all the way through week 17, it's about getting ready for the opponent. And that means the starting quarterback gets the vast majority of the reps. We're talking 80 80 plus percent and that's a heavy workload that's a heavy pitch count uh nick hasn't had that so right now his elbow feels great is it going to feel great uh as he continues to get that work week in and week out i i think that's something we have to keep an eye on all right johnny mack here sports bass live 97.3 espn at the nugget in atlantic city golden nugget ac uh john um Nightmare scenario. What is it this weekend? What, what, what's the one nightmare thing that could happen that on Monday when you join us, um, we're talking about and pulling our hair out? 
Well, I think I just said it earlier in the conversation. Jason Pierre, Paul, Olivier Vernon, Snacks Harrison breaking through the line and yeah. hurting Nick Foles. That's a nightmare. That's that's season over. Uh, you know, I know everyone was disappointed in, in Carson's inju- injury, and rightfully so, but you have a very good backup. There's no team in this league that can survive two quarterbacks going down. No. Well, maybe except – Minnesota, but even even then, <laughs> they didn't have they didn't have two quarterbacks going down because Teddy Teddy Bridgewater wasn't there at the beginning of the season. Uh, so really, Chase Keenan was a backup. I, I I can't think of a third string quarterback that anybody would have any confidence. In. So that would obviously be uh, the nightmare scenario. All right, John. Um couple quickies because uh, there are a lot of uh, good games this weekend. Let's get um, Green Bay, Carolina. Everyone just thinks Rodgers is going to roll back onto the field after, what, seven, eight weeks out, go to Carolina, light them up, and, uh, you know, win a football game. I'm in the boat of Rodgers is the best in the game, but can he knock the rust off and go play a potential division champion on the road and win? Well, I, I think all you have to do is look at the last time. Uh, and he came back for a Week 17 game in Chicago, won the game to get the Packers in the playoffs. Uh, but he was rusty, and it was a late uh, fourth quarter comeback, uh, and, and he won the football game with a great Aaron Rodgers-like play. But overall, he wasn't very sharp. I, I think you're right. He's not going to be – uh, Aaron Rodgers at, at his apex, apex because there's going to be some rust. And, and Carolina's a good football team. So, no, there's no guarantee. Certainly the Packers are going to win that game. They have a, a, a much better chance. They had no chance with Brett Hundley going into Carolina. Yeah. So uh, they're in a better situation. But uh, they're going to have some difficulty. Uh, Rams, Seattle, those uh, – Division championship really at pl- in play here. Rams could lose two in a row. Seahawks could lose two in a row. So um, this is a huge one, and, and it has implications for the playoffs because if Seattle wins, they would be tied. Uh, they would have the lead in the in the West. So this is a big game, and conceivably, you could start to see the Rams with some cracks potentially, and they could find themselves on the outside of the playoffs looking in if they lose this game. Well, I think this is uh, this is very important for the Rams as oh yeah. Uh, for a number of reasons. The obvious ones, as you mentioned, but also as a very young team, as a very talented team, uh, this is a statement game for them. They, they have better players at this stage than the Seahawks do. Uh, and we've, we've talked about Seattle and the issues on the offensive line, the issues in the running game, uh, all the injuries on the back end. This is, this is a statement the Rams have to make. If, if the Seahawks sort of the old Warriors in December are able to win this game. Yeah, I, I think it's a clear indication that the Rams are going to waver and go away and they're not going to be a significant contender. A couple more uh, real quick, because um, there's a lot of games with playoff implications. Um, we'll get to the big one in a minute. But uh, tomorrow, right here on 97.3 ESPN, Chargers and Kansas City. Uh, you know, earlier this season, it was the Chiefs that were on top of the world. The Chargers have come storming back in this division. But can they cross the country and win in Kansas City? That's a tough place. Did the Chargers, uh, did the Chiefs right the ship? Yeah, I think they did a little bit. But, I, I mean, this is the game. This is it. I, I, I mean, I don't think you can feel comfortable after the way uh, the Chiefs collapsed. Uh, I still have a lot of, of faith in Andy Reid and his ability, his steady hand. Uh, so I lean towards the Chiefs, but there's no doubt uh, the Chargers are the hotter team. Phillip Rivers is playing amazing. Keenan Allen has been right there with Antonio Brown as, as one of the best receivers in football. Yeah. Uh, they're really, really hot. So, I, I you know, I, I always kind of default toward the Chiefs, but uh, this is this is a pick em game. It's this legit. Is, yeah, it, it, and it's obviously it's very important for both teams. All right, last one is uh, Pittsburgh, New England. I mean, this we talked about this yesterday, Pete and I. I mean, the winner of this game, 
I mean, this is almost for the Super Bowl. I mean, it's for home field, and the team that gets home field in the playoffs, you would think is going to be a favorite to make it to the Super Bowl. So, I mean, this game is about as optimum importance as you can get. Yeah, and, and you think about the Patriots and the way they played in Miami. Generally, they don't have two games in a row like that. Uh, and, and Belichick has kind of made his reputation in this league by taking away the best player uh, on the opposition. And, and Antonio Brown's been so good. He, he should be in the MVP conversation, which is almost unheard of if you're a wide receiver. Uh, I, I don't think we've seen somebody as impactful at wide receiver since Randy Moss was in his prime. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. I, I think the Steelers are more talented. I, I've said all year the Patriots kind of do it with mirrors uh, on the front seven of their defense. There's not a ton of talent there. There really isn't. No. Uh, and I, I just think Pittsburgh, even though they've sort of been on a razor's edge week in and week out, winning close games, close games, I, I, th I think they're the better team this year. All right, Johnny Mack here with us on the Sports Bash Live 97.3 ESPN. Mm -hmm. John, will we be seeing you at tonight's holiday party? Uh, <laughs> that's a good indication because we're in the middle of the blizzard. I am trying. Is I'm it snowing? We're this. inside the nugget here, so we don't know. Oh, well, Josh told me it is not snowing down here. I'm in, I'm in the Cherry Hill area, and it is snowing miserably oh. right now. Oh, wow. Well, I don't like to hear that. Yeah. Well. So it could be on its way. Well, maybe you'll be uh, so you'll you'll be a surprise entry then. Let's just like the Royal Rumble. You're number thirty. <laughs> <laughs> I will try to make it. All right, you'll keep us posted. Because I was going to say, I don't know that your outfit will be able to upstage the PTs. <laughs> oh, as PT still has the duster. I have to see that. Yes, oh, yeah. the duster, and it's trimmed. It's, Yesterday it's it was now you hanging can see over lip. the lip. It Today, was a little too Andy Reid esque. Yeah. Today Yesterday, it's, John. it's cleaned up. <laughs> the duster's good. But well, I, as I, as now, and now I'm going to try to trudge through the snow just to see the duster. It's Slow careful. and steady wins the race, the John. We look careful. forward to seeing you. All right, man. All right, guys. Thanks. Thank Johnny you. Mack, brought to you by Gino, the winemaker's choice for 50 years. Gino Pinto, Whitehorse Pike Hamilton, online at GinoPinto.com. Gino, the winemaker's choice for 50 years. Gino.